Welcome to this first uh, practical lecture in the course 1db437, Introduction to Game Programming. My name is Johan Hagelbeck uh, and I'm going to walk you through the Rollerball project from uh, the Unity website. Uh, so, I've just started an uh, empty uh, Unity window here and I'm going to walk through everything we need to in order to make this simple game. So, the task is to develop this simple game where you control a rolling ball and the ball shall pick up objects by colliding with them. And we shall show a player score and calculate. So you get some points for every pickup object you collect. So, first we set up a game. Uh, I already set up an empty game, but uh, if you haven't done so, you just click New Project and uh, name your project Rollerball something and, and the location where you want it to be. And it should be a 3D project and you create project and you will see the interface I have shown here. It can be slight differences depending on the Unity version you have. The slides is from a slightly older 5.0 uh, version of Unity and now I have 5.3.4 so it's a bit newer. But we have some panels. Yeah, that's the same thing for regardless of which version you have. So to the left you have a panel with the object you can click the, there are a few objects already directional light and a main camera in the center we have uh, the game scene we can switch between a game view and a scene view here's a scene view uh, which shows that we have a camera and some light and we have a game view which is empty at the moment but we're gonna stick to the scene view and we have a number of uh, buttons here and there. To the right we have some settings for the selected objects. So now I've selected the directional light object and we have some settings for it, the position and uh, some other stuff which we will go through later. And the panel at the bottom where it says assets, that's where you have all the files and folders and stuff which you use in, in the game. So first we're gonna create a folder for our scenes because we want to organize everything in a nice way. So we just right click in the assets and make create folder and name it scenes. Okay, so now you should have the scenes folder. And next step is to save the actual scene. Uh, a scene is like a level in, in Unity, so we can have several scenes in a project, but in this course we're going to stick to one scene for every project. So, we choose a file menu. It can look slightly bit different if you are on a Macintosh or if you are on Windows, but you should have a file menu anyhow. And then select Save Scene As, and it should be placed in the Assets folder for now. We name it Level 1 and click Save. And now you see that the Level 1 scene uh, is shown up in the assets folder but we want to organize it so we take the scene and move it to the scenes folder and if we double click the scenes folder we'll see that this is where we have all our scenes so we organize it in a nice way next step is to create the ground floor for the game where the ball will roll on uh, so we're going to make a plane, and the plane doesn't have a volume, volume it's just a flat, two-dimensional plane. Uh, so, we go into the Game Object menu, select 3D Object, and then we have a plane. Click Plane. Then you see that something will show up here. Your new plane is shown up in, in the list of Game Objects, and something in the Scene view is, is shown. Also in the game view, doesn't look that fancy yet. And we have the properties for the plane here in the right. So we rename the plane to ground because this is the ground object we have. So just click in the box and, and 
write a new game name ground. And as always, we should have a habit of selecting the little cogwheel at the transform and reset the transform. It resets the position, rotation, and scale to uh, to the default position. Sometimes when you create new objects, they are not in the default position, and it can make things a bit difficult for us. So we should have it as a habit to, to reset the transform. And it brings the object to the region 0, 0, 0 with no rotation and a scale of 1, 1, 1 in all directions. So we know where the object is. So this gizmo here in the middle, the green arrow, uh, uh, red, blue, shows the origin of the game. And we can zoom in by using the mouse wheel. Zoom in and out. So the transform is reset and we resize it a bit because we want to make it slightly bit bigger. So we change the scale in X level to 2 and you see that the size changes in the scene view and on set level to 2. The height level Y is always 0. We can change that to, to 10. Nothing happens because the plane doesn't have a height, it doesn't have a volume. Um, and we can also resize it in a different way. We can uh, select a scale up here and we can move and resize it. And we see that the values here change. We can also click and hold the values here. You see that you get some errors and you can change it or you can type the values in directly. So we're going to type the values 2, 2, 2, 1, 2 directly into here. So now we have our ground. So next step is a player object. The player shall control something in this game. So it's going to make a sphere. It will be a three-dimensional ball and we can create it in a number of ways. We can use the option game object, 3D object, and then we have a sphere. That's the first option, uh, similar to what we used when we created the plane. Or we can click create in game object view, and we have a 3D object sphere. So click here again, and we can see what happened. So something was added, a sphere. We see something in the middle here, we're going to zoom in soon, and we have the properties of the sphere. So first step is to rename it to the player, because this is the player object which we're going to use. And as always, reset the transform. So select the player object, and we can press the F button. F means that we focus on the player object. So now we see it uh, slightly more zoomed in. We see that we have half a sphere right now. And we can also zoom in and out with the scroll wheel on the mouse button if we would like. And it looks like the ball is buried in the ground right now and, and that's not what we want. We want the ball to be on top of the ground. So we're gonna select it, change the position a little bit. So we're gonna lift it up, the transform. Transform is the position, rotation and scale of all the objects, that's what we call a transform. And the position is, and the height is the y-axis, so we're gonna change that to 0 0.5. We lift it half a unit up and suddenly it is on top of a plane because the scale is 1 and we lift it half a unit. Uh, that looks correct. Uh, and we can also see that we have some shadows on by default when we create a new object. Uh, if we would like to, we can remove the shadows, but we, we're going to use shadows for the ball in this case. But there are a lot of options we can change for all the objects we create and we're going to look into more and more objects later in this lecture and on the second project lecture. So first thing we're gonna do is to look at some lighting 
because we want some light. We have some light already created with we'll CV. Uh, the sun look like a thingy up here above our player ball. And it's very bright, it's uh, almost white, the plane. Uh, so we're gonna change it a bit and we're gonna do it in two ways. We're gonna use two lights in this scene. One light will be the directional light, uh, which we're gonna modify a bit. And we're gonna use a fill light with less intensity that shines up from below the ground. Uh, and it's gonna make the ball look a bit more better and the shadows a bit more better. So first select the directional light and the light as it is now shines from uh, minus 30 in Y level. Uh, we're gonna change, change that a bit. We change it to 60 in this case, our rotation uh, and 30. And we notice that the rays coming from the sun gizmo changes a bit. So now it's coming from the side and if we change it to 60 it's coming from slightly from above at some angle. And the Y level we can change it to 3 now we can lift it up to, to anything we like. Uh, and if we go to the game level we see that we have some light here on the ground. Next step is to add a fill light, that's a light coming from below. And the easiest thing to do that is to duplicate the light we already have. So we can go into the edit menu and select duplicate and, oh, sorry. I selected delete, duplicate was the right thing. And we see that a directional light, a new directional light will show up. We can also use the Control D or Command D for uh, for Mac if we want to duplicate it. So the new directional light shows up. We're gonna select it and we're gonna change it a bit. First, we rename it to Fill Light because that's the second light we have. Fill Light, and we see that the name changes. And we're gonna reverse. So it's gonna shine up from below. And we see that we get a slightly light area on the player because the light shines up from below. And we're going and right now it's this yellow bright light. We're gonna change it a bit so the ball looks a bit better. So we select the color and we're gonna make it a bit of a bluish and now you see that we have the bluish light here and the lightning changes in the scene uh, we're also going to make it less intense so we change the intensity to 0 0.5 so now it looks quite okay we can zoom in on the ball and we see that it looks quite okay and we also remove the shadows from the fill light because it's not gonna... It's coming from below and it's not gonna make any shadows in our scene. So now we have a clear distinction between the player ball and the shadows cast from uh, the directional light. So we can see in the slides to the right that there is a slight different if we add the fill light. Uh, we get a more live feeling or something to the ball. It's something that's causing some uh, light coming from below. It looks quite fancy. So, next step is to add some walls around our game world because we don't want our ball to move and fall endlessly down. So. First, we're gonna organize something. Uh, we have the assets folder here. We organize stuff in folders. That's the, uh, the main thing to do if we're 
in an operating system, but for the actual objects we can organize them in a slightly different way, and that way is of creating empty game objects. So we're gonna go into the game object menu and create an empty, and we see that we get an empty game object. It only has a transform, so nothing else at this moment. So we're gonna rename it to walls because that's gonna be a container for all our walls objects. And as always, we reset the transform. So this is what we're gonna place all the walls in. So an empty game object is nothing that is visible in the game world, but we can and we can use it to organize if we have long, long lists of objects. Next step is to create an actual wall. So we go into the game object menu, 3D object, and for walls we're going to use a cube. So select a cube. And if we focus on the cube, we see that something is added here on top of a player. And we have an object called cube in the game object list. And we're gonna rename it to North Wall. We have four walls, so we're gonna make North, South, East, and West, and we'll reset the transform. And we can move the wall object to our container, the walls. So now we see that we can click and open it and expand it, and we see all the wall objects as child objects to walls. So, this doesn't really look like a wall yet. We have it zoomed in, it's on top of a player, and we're gonna change it a bit. It's in the wrong position and wrong size because it doesn't cover the whole game world we have. So, we're gonna lift it up a bit. Now it covers a player, we know that we lift it up a unit. And we're gonna change the scale in X level to 20.5. This is what I know will, will cover the whole game world, but uh, if you don't know, you, you can change the size until you're happy with when it looks good. So now we have a wall. Uh, problem is it's in the center, so we, we need to move it a bit. We can either select the move tool up here and we can move it around or slightly a bit better, we can enter the values which we want. And the value should be 0, 0 0.5 and minus 10. Ta-da! Now we have a wall object on the side. So, the Unity tools we have up in the upper left corners, we have a translation tool. Uh, we can click and drag the camera around. Uh, the first move tool and we have can click it here, change orbit and we have the translate tool, the rotation tool where we can rotate object and the scale tool where we can change scale of the object like we did with the plane. Uh, but the translate tool where we move objects around are the most common one. So and the first hand is something. Let's see, hold Alt and click. Now we have the Orbit tool. We can orbit the camera around a given point. No, nothing that we're gonna use. Uh, and we have some other zoom tool, but it works okay with zooming with the mouse wheel. I think that's the easiest option. So we. We're gonna use that most of the time. So we only have one wall. We're gonna make a new wall. So we select the wall and we duplicate it. We can either duplicate it from the game menu or we can make use Command D for Mac and Control D for our Windows. And we make a copy of the North Wall. Uh, so we have a North Wall 1, which is exactly the same as the other wall. But we should not have two north walls, so we rename it to the south wall instead. 
this is going to be in the south and the north wall was on position minus 10 in the z-axis and the south wall going to be the opposite 10 in the z-axis. And now we see that we have a wall on the opposite side of the game world. We do the same for the third wall. We make a duplicate and we're going to make, rename it east wall. And the scale here should be 20.5 in Z level instead of X level. We see that we get it down at the bottom. Position should be X 10 Y 0 0.5 Z 0. And now we have another wall. And they almost completely overlap. You can change it a bit if you like, but I think it looks okay as it is now. So now we have the east wall looking like this, the game world and the scene view. And the fourth wall will be a copy of the east wall. So we're gonna select the east wall, duplicate it, rename it to west wall, west wall, and change the position. Instead of x10, x should be 0 and z10. No, sorry, minus 10, of course, the opposite position. Okay, now it looks correct. We have four walls and we have a player object in the middle. So, what do we want to do with the player? Because right now we cannot do anything. So, we want to do something with the player. What behavior do we want? We want it to roll around in the game world and we want it to collide with other game objects. And collisions and movement require physics. Physics in games is uh, a simulation of real physics, like objects behave in the real world. And there are different types of physics objects we can use. And we're going to talk more about that in the theoretical lecture lectures later. But for now, we're going to use uh, the physics component called rigid body. And the rigid body can receive forces and torques to make an object move in a realistic way. And it's needed for an object to be influenced by gravity, if we would like that, and to be able to interact with other game objects. So we're going to attach a rigid body to our player. So select a player object in the left list. I'm going to see that it's selected here. And we click the Add Component button under the uh, Properties. And here we get a list of stuff and we go into Physics. And on top you have a rigid body. So select the rigid body component. And you see that a new component is added to the player object. A rigid body where we have some mass drag, angular drag, use gravity, kinematics, etc. We're gonna talk about a bit more about some of those later. So now we have the object can the player object can interact with the game world because we have some physics component to the object. But we want to the player to interact with it. And to interact with it we're going to use scripts. Scripts is the actual game code we write in our game. It's called scripts in Unity. And you can write it in uh, C Sharp or JavaScript, but for this course, we will use C Sharp for all the scripts. So, first, we're going to organize stuff. So, we click create down in the left down and we create a new folder. And we're going to call the folder scripts. So an empty folder. Okay, what happened to my... Uh, just one second. It's appeared for some reason. Now we're back. Okay, good. We have a scripts folder. Uh, so, if you haven't done so already, rename the folder to scripts. This is where we're going to place all our scripts that interact with some objects in our rollerball game. Select a player object again in the upper left and the left panel. 
game object panel and click add component because we're gonna make a new script for it and down in the bottom you have something called new script click that make sure that C sharp is created name the new script player controller because it's gonna be a controller that controls our play object C sharp click create and add Ta da now we'll see that the script shown up in the assets folder and we also have a script shown up here attached to the player object, player controller script. Okay, but we want it to be in the scripts folder so we just click and drag it to the scripts folder and we can open the scripts folder. And here we have the player control script. So we're gonna add some code to it. We can either double click it or we can uh, right click and select open. And now a code editor will open. It depends on how you install it. If you install it on, on Mac, uh, the Mono Develop will open. Uh, but on Windows you can use Visual Studio instead if you have Visual Studio installed. Both are okay. So now the player controller script opened. And we have some, some stuff in it already. Here we have a list of scripts. So it's filled with some uh, basic functionality of some basic code using the Unity engine and systems dot collections are or bare by default. It's a public class called player controller and it extends the mono behavior and all classes we create extends the mono behavior. And we have two uh, methods, empty methods. We have a start method and we have the update method. Start method is used for in initialization. It's like a constructor and the update method method is called once per game frame. So it's called continuously in the game. Uh, and those two are always added when we create a new script. Uh, and besides the update we have two more uh, methods we can use. We have a fixed update and we have a late update. The regular update is called before uh, rendering a frame, before we render the graphics in frame. And this is where most game logic will go, so where we update the state of different objects. The fixed update is called before all physics calculations. So if we do something with physics, it should be in the fixed update. And the late update is called last in a frame. And we will not use it in this project. We'll discuss it a bit more later. So, how are we gonna make the ball move. We can either directly change the position of a ball or we can apply some forces to a ball. If we change the position of a ball it will move in the same speed if we click the different buttons we're gonna use for moving the ball or if we apply forces it's gonna when we stop applying a force it's gonna slow down and halt. Uh, and in this case, for this project, we will use apply a force, a physics force, to the player object, or more specifically, the rigid body component of a player object. And since it's physics, we need the fixed update method. So we write a new one void fixed update new empty method. And to for the player to interact with something we need something called input and we see that we get a lot of examples of input here when we write uh, the auto completion, Android input, cluster input, etc. Different types of classes we can use. But we can also select the input and bring up the documentation. The documentation is installed with Unity, so we should be able to bring it up. So either control and 
uh, the single quote or for Mac command and the single quote should bring it up. Let's see if I can do it here. Now it works like this. Okay, now we get to documentation and we see here we have input, interface, input into the input system. So click it and we have some description describing what we're gonna, how the input works. You can read up about it. We have some example code and we have some variables and some methods we can use. Let's see. Static functions. Here we have get axis. That's a very good method. We're interested in. So we're gonna click the get axis. Uh, returns the value of a virtual axis identified by axis name. So the value will be in the range of minus one to one for keyboard and joystick input. That looks about okay. And we have some example code here that can be fairly good. So we're gonna use some of that code. So we move back to our scripting and our script and we're gonna have two variables move horizontal input dot get axis and horizontal because that's what's explained in in the documentation we can have get axis horizontal and get axis vertical and we need both so move V for move vertical is input dot get a axis and vertical and make sure that you spell it correctly otherwise you would have a problem. And we need to now we know what the player presses, the arrow button on the keyboards, and we need to apply it to a force to the rigid body of our player object. So we can write rigid body, select it, and then bring up the documentation command or control and the single quote. And we will get rigid body at the top. Uh, and we would like to apply some force. So we go to the functions and we have a method called add force that looks about okay so click that one and we see it adds the force and a vector free a three dimensional vector is the direction and the strength of a force we're gonna apply and we have some code here rigid body dot add force transform dot forward times thrust so we're gonna use something similar uh, so we go back, not to Unity, but to the uh, model develop, and we need a vector free because that's the force we're gonna apply to our player object, uh, and we can have horizontal and vertical movement. We will not move up and down, uh, so we only need two values. So the two values gonna make a three-dimensional vector. So the vector movement, we will move that one for now. Vector free movement is a new vector free. And in the X level, we're gonna move use move horizontal. In the Y level, that's up and down. We're not gonna move up and down, so it's gonna be zero. And on the Z axis, move vertical. So now we have the movement vector and the next step is to apply it to the rigid body so we're going to select the rigid body body that's rigid body component equals get component because we want to get the rigid body component from the player object so get component and we have the uh, the triangle brackets so what is called rigid body. So now we have 
a reference to the body component of the player object and we are going to apply the force to the body. So body.add force and movement. Good. Now we're going to save the script, control S and move back to Unity and click the play button up here. Now we'll move to the game view and if you press the arrow button on your keyboard you will see that uh, it moves around but the movement is very 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 slow at this point. So click on the play button again and we get back to the scene view and we will modify the actual movement. So we go back to the code editor and we're gonna multiply the movement by some speed because we move horizontal and move vertical only had a range between minus one and one depending on if you click left or right or up and down so we multiply it by some variable speed and we create that variable up in the class so we're gonna have public float variable called speed and another thing we're gonna use here is that we're gonna multiply it by something called time dot delta time and that's a wait time so to say to make uh, the speed frame rate independent uh, so it's it's going to be the same speed regardless of uh, the actual frame rate, how fast your game is running at this moment. If it runs on 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, no matter what, the speed will always be the same. So that can be a quite handy to use in some cases. So we multiply it by time dot delta time as well. And a good thing about public objects like the speed is that we can go back to Unity, we can select the player object, and we see sorry, in the properties of the player controller script to the right that speed suddenly shows up as a variable here, a field that we can enter. So we can change the speed. We don't have to go into the code to change the speed, we can change the speed in, in Unity. And we can try with a speed of 500, could maybe be good and click the play button again to test and now it moves much faster and looks a bit better but we can move in the camera and yeah speed is good but we have some more things to do to make the game look good uh, because as we see the camera doesn't follow the ball so the ball can move into the distance and it can move towards the camera and disappear. And the camera is also placed very low, almost at the ground level. So the ball is very, very, very large when it moves towards the camera. And that's something we need to fix. So first select the main camera here. Camera is always added and we have and you get a preview of the camera from the game view and we're gonna lift the camera up a bit so instead of being at almost ground level at one, one we lift it up to 10 and we see that something changes in the camera preview note that the scene view doesn't change if we change the camera because the scene view is not connected to the camera but the game view changes and the preview you have down here is what the game view looks like. So lift it up and we tilt the rotation, so we tilt it down 45 degrees and we now see that it looks a bit better. And we can test the game and we see it from slightly above but the ball can still disappear because the camera doesn't follow the player a bit and we would like the camera to follow the player. So to do that we need a script, so we select camera if it isn't already selected, go to add component pattern, select 
new script, name it camera controller and make sure that C sharp is selected. Camera controller and click create and add. And if we click on the assets here on the folder view, you will see a V camera script and we move it to the scripts folder. So we want to organize the scripts into the scripts folder. And we're gonna open and edit the script. We can do that in a different ways. Either we can go into the script folders and double click or choose open from the script, or we can go into the main camera, the game object, and we have a script component here. We can select the cog wheel and select edit script. So there are usually multiple ways we can modify stuff in Unity. So now it brings up the camera controller and it looks exactly as the player controller when we first created it. We have the same default method start and update. To follow the player we need to know where the player is. So we need a reference to the player game object. And we also need an offset for where we're gonna place the camera relative to the player object. So we need the two variables. So the player object is of type game object. So we're gonna make the game object, which we call player. And the offset, since we are in a three dimensional world, the offset is a vector free. So we're gonna use a lot of vector frees in creating our game, so you better get used to them. And what offset shall we use? Well, if we go back to Unity, we already created a nice offset in the game view. This is the offset we're gonna use. Uh, so we can use the start position of a camera as offset. Since the player is in the origin, we can use the camera position as offset because the rating is zero, zero, zero. And if we go back to model develop, we're gonna, we only need to set the offset once when we create a script in the constructor of a start method. So the offset equals the position of the camera. And since this script is connected to uh, the camera already, we can use the transform. Transform is, as you remember, the position rotation and scale of a game object and it's the position we would like to do. So offset equals transform.position. And camera is something that we're going to use after rendering all the objects and after physics calculations. So we're gonna change the camera position in the late update. So we just change the update to the late update. You can remove the comments if we would like. So the late update. And what do we need to change? We need to change the position of a camera. So a transform dot position. That's the position of the cameras. So we take the transform of a camera and the position and we need to change it, so we're going to make, set a new value to it. And the new is the player plus the offset. Player position plus offset. So we have the player game object, player dot transform dot position, position of a player plus the offset. Because offset is where we want to place the camera. So save the script and go back to Unity. And if we select the game camera again, we see that something is missing. Uh, the controller script here, player is none and should be a game object. So that's what we need to change. And we simply right left click and hold the player object in the game object menu and drag it to the player field and release. And you will see that it should look like player game object and click the play button to test the script. Ta-da! Now it follows the player. That looks fairly good. Perfect! Just like we wanted it. 
A second step is, or the next step is to do something to for the player to do. So, the pick up object, stuff that the player picks up to receive some score. Uh, so we can use something like in Pac-Man, where Pac-Man eat pills, we can use some pills or some objects to pick up here. And the objects, we're gonna use a simple cube for the object. So we go into the game object menu, 3D object and select a cube. And now the cube comes into the uh, region or lifted up a bit so uh, uh, that's not where we want the cube we can move it a bit to the slides that i when i created it the cube was flying in the air so we need to move the cube a bit so first we reset the transform so we have it in the region and now it goes down half a unit so it's centered around the region 0 0 0 in x y and z axis uh, and we're gonna rename it from p cube to pickup because pickup that's what we call our objects we're gonna pick up and focus on it if you haven't done so already click the object Pick up, move the mouse to the uh, scene view and press F when you focus on it. Now it focuses on. And we're gonna move it a bit. We're gonna lift it up because it's buried in the ground. And we move it a bit to the side. Now you see we can focus on it again. Now it moved to the side a bit. Okay, now it's correct. So it's not at the same, exact the same position as the player object. It's easier to see what we do if we move it a bit. And we resize it. We don't want the cube to be that big. So we're going to resize it to 0.5 in all angles. In all directions. X, Y, and Z, I mean. Not angle. And now it's floating in the air. You see the shadows it's casting. Is, it's floating in the air. And that's kind of what we wanted. Uh, and we can tilt it a bit. I need to select it again because I deselected it. So we tilt it. The rotation, that's the angle we can rotate, tilt it in. So we tilt it in 45 degrees in all angles. So now we have the pickup cube here. Tilted. Uh, looks a bit better than just a regular cube. Uh, and to make it a bit more live, the game world, we can rotate the cube. Uh, and it also draws more attention for the player if something is moving. So it's not a static game world or something that moves around. And we can do that with a pickup object, but we need to add a script for it. So create a new script by clicking Add Component. Go to new script, make sure C sharp is selected and rename the script rotator. Click create and add. And we see that rotator opens in the S or is placed in the SS folder and we move it to the scripts folder as we always do. And we open it in the code editor. Now we have the rotator script here. We will not deal with physics here because we will not apply forces. We will just change the transform of the object. We can change the transform position or we can change the transform uh, angle, the rotation of the actual object. Uh, and so we make a rotation of the transform uh, and we will not set a new transform. We will just rotate the actual transform. That's a bit more efficient if we're going to talk about efficient code. So we need some way of rotating it and we use a vector free for that again. Rotate. Vector frees are very good. I'm going to use them a lot. And 
in the constructor, the start method, we create a new vector free, how we want it to move, and we can move it in any way we like actually, but we're gonna use 15 degrees, x, 30, y, and 45 z. That's the degree angles. So we're gonna we have some more about maths for games in uh, lecture number three. And then we need to uh, to modify the transform. So we can look, we can write transform, and we can make use control or command and the single quotes to bring up the the actual documentation and we can select the transform. What can we do with a transform? Well, there's a lot of things. Public functions, we can rotate the transform, that's a good way. And, and if we look at the example code, transform.rotate, and we have a vector free, and multiplied by time dot delta time. So go back to the script. We're gonna use similar. So transform dot rotate and rotate needed a vector free. We already created a vector free. And to make it frame rate independent, we multiply by time dot delta time. So save the script, go back to Unity, and if we click the play button, you will see that the cube rotates in some angles. It looks very nice. But if we move the player towards it, you will see that we don't, we just collide with the object. We don't, we don't pick it up as it is now. So that's something we need to change in the game. But we want more than one pickup object. Because that would be a shame to, to just have one. It would be a very, very boring game. And we can duplicate the objects, uh, or we can use something called prefabs. Prefabs is very, very handy in Unity because it's a template or a blueprint. It's uh, a print for creating identical objects. So if we have a prefab object, if we change something, uh, if we change some of the properties to the right, or if we change something in the script, it will affect all instances of the prefab object. So prefabs are very handy when we need to create a lot of instances of the same object. And if we would duplicate the object, if we change something, we would apply the changes to all objects or copies of the objects. And making prefabs is quite simple. We go to the assets here. We create a new folder, which we're gonna call prefabs. So make sure that you spell it correctly. And we simply select, pick up object, uh, left click and drag it into the prefabs folder. And now we'll see that we have a pickup prefab. We'll see it, a preview of it here. We'll also see in the game you hear that it turned slightly blue instead of black, meaning that it's a prefab. And since we want to organize stuff, we would like it uh, like some container to have all the pickup objects. So we're gonna create an empty object game object menu, create empty, and we have an empty game object. And we rename that empty game object pickups. I shall spell it correctly. So pickups. Uh, and you see that the transform is not correct. Uh, reset. So we're going to reset the transform to origin. Reset the transform. and. We take the prefab pickup and move it to the pickups folder. This is where we're gonna place all our pickups. And we can make copies of them, and that's a good way 
but remember that if we have a prefab, if we make a change to one of them, changes can affect all of them. And we can zoom in and zoom out a bit. We can click on the y-axis here on the gizmo and we see the game on the top level and that can be very good when we place it. So click on the Y on the gizmo in top of a scene view and we see the game world from a top. So we need to place the different objects and we can place them, we can move it around a bit or we can change the, let's see if I move to it correctly. Okay, if we select the move here, uh, move tool, we can move it around in the game, game world. Uh, there are also two ways we can move it around. We can have a global or we can have a local movement. And we're going to talk about local and global coordinates later. If we have local, then you see that it goes up and down in the ground. That's not what we want. If we have a global, yeah, it's the same as the global actually. Uh, it's a bit tricky to move them around a bit. Uh, easiest way is if we're just gonna place the objects where we want them. So first step is to we reset them transform and remember to change the scale because we wanted it to be slightly different and the rotation also 45 45 that's what we started with and 0 0.5 2 that's the start values we had and we wanted to move it on top. Now it moves along the ground perfectly. We can move it to something like here. That sounds quite good. Six something. There. And we want to create a circle of pickup objects around a player ball, similar to what we have in uh, the uh, slides showing to the right. So we can we can just start making it. We can make copies of each other. So uh, make a copy of the pickup and we have a new pickup and we change it to minus six instead of six and we get it down in the bottom. We can make a new copy control D and we can change it to level zero, then it's the center, but we can have six in X level. Make a copy of that one, control D, and we change it to minus six and we get it on the opposite side. And now we need some in the middle. So we take a copy of this one and we can have it on minus two. Oh, sorry deleted one that's not what I intended control D now I got the copy minus two perhaps and four maybe well that looks okay we we'll select it and make a duplicate so this is something that you need to do for all the objects and it's a bit of a manual work but That's the two position. And that's the four. Four, two. Now it's starting to look like something. It's not a circle, but well, it's gonna be a square. That's okay. Minus two. Okay, now it's done. 
it looks like something. There you go. Now we have all the pickup objects. You can change it. Gizmo a bit. You can rotate it slightly. Perspective, there it goes. So this is what it's gonna look like. And it looks okay. We can spread them out a bit any way we like. That's okay. And if we test the game, all of them are rotating nicely. But as I said before, we cannot pick them up. We just bounce off them. And that's not what we want. So that's the next step to do. Pick up the actual objects. So we need to detect collisions between the player and each pickup object. And if we detect a collision, we need to remove a pickup object. And we don't want to remove a game object if a player collides with other objects such as the walls or ground, then it would not look very nice. So we need some changes to the scripts. So if we go back to the scripts folder and the player controller script, we need to make some changes to the player controller script so we can open it or it is probably already opened in the editor. And this is what it looks like. Uh, what we did before when we moved it. And we need some collider for it. So we can go back to Unity to, 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 to the player object, see that it already has a sphere collider. We can bring up the documentation here or we can bring up the documentation from the uh, from the script itself by writing collider and then search. So here we see the sphere collider, we can click the switch to scripting and here we get some information about what to do. There are some triggers we can use, M messages is in the bottom. And we have something called on trigger enter. On trigger enter is called when the collider ever enters the trigger. So click that one. And we see example class void on trigger enter collider ever destroy the other game object. Sounds like something we're gonna use. So take that code, copy it, and we can paste it into our so ta -da, void on trigger enter collider ever destroy the other game object. Perfect. We can also do something that if we don't want to destroy it, we can simply disable it. So we don't want to destroy the pickup object here. We just want to disable it. So other, that's the object we collide with, dot game object. The object is something we want to do with. And dot set active and false. Then we disable the actual object. And we also need what type of collider we have is, what are we colliding with. And to do that, there is something called tags. And tags can be used to distinguish between different types of objects. So we go back to Unity and we need to assign a tag. Uh, so if we go into the pickup, remember that if we change something for one of the pickups, it can affect all the others since we are using prefabs. So click the tag untagged menu to the right, click add tag. And now we get a list of some tags. We can click the plus button and we add a new tag called pickup. That's the tag we're going to use for the pickup objects. And we go back to the prefab. It's still on tag, we need to select the menu again, again and select pickup. Now pickup is set. And if we click all the other objects, hmm, it seems that they are still untagged. I think we need to go to the prefab down here and change pickup tag. Now pickup is tagged. 
we cannot change anything. If we change something, the game object here, the copies of a game object, it doesn't affect the prefab. So we need to go into the actual prefab in the prefabs folder, change it to pickup, and then all the different pickups are affected. So back to the code editor, we need to see what other is. And we can use it by a simple if case. If other dot game object, the game object itself dot tag equals pickup. If it is a pickup object, then we disable it. Simple as that. We can test the game. And we see that it still doesn't work. There's one more thing we need to do. And it's a very important thing. It's a very easy thing to do. In very easy thing to miss in Unity. Because the physics ending, it, it does not allow two colliding objects to overlap. Two objects collide, they don't overlap. Uh, and that's why the game does not work as we intended it, because we want it to overlap. So we have two types of colliders in the game. We have static colliders used for non-moving game objects and dynamic colliders used for moving objects like the player. Static colliders are not affected by collisions, but the dynamic colliders are. And to make collisions work uh, with code, the code we wrote on trigger enter, we need to use a dynamic collider called trigger colliders. So if we select the prefab down here and we have something called in the box collider here is trigger. Check the is trigger box so it's selected and test the game. Ta da! Now it works as intended. If we're gonna handle collisions between objects with code, with the on trigger enter, or any other method call in scripts, we need to have trigger colliders. So we need to select is trigger. So that's quite easy to miss sometimes. And we can, there are a couple of things that we can optimize the game because Unity game can be optimized in different ways. So they work more or less uh, fast. And the static colliders are pre-calculated and stored in a cache and each time they are rotated and moved, uh, they are recalculated. So all the static colliders are recalculated and that takes quite some time. So we need a dynamic collider. And, and an object, if we're going to turn an object into a dynamic collider, we simply add a rigid body component. Then we tell Unity that this is a dynamic collider. It's a collider that is moving and needs to be updated all the time. So we simply add a component, physics, rigid body. Nothing actually happens in the game. Uh, but we will optimize performance. It's, it worked as it was intended before. And we need to change it to is kinematic. If it's not is kinematic, then it will be affected by forces like gravity and stuff, and that's not what we are intended because we need we want to pick up the objects. Uh, and the static colliders, the ground, the walls can be static colliders because they don't move, we don't rotate them, we are the same. And if objects doesn't move throughout the game, then static colliders are have the highest performance. But if they move, we need dynamic colliders. and the game still works as intended. So the final thing we need to do is calculating the score. So we get the score for each time we pick up an object and we shall show the score on the screen in the upper left corner. So to show something, we need to create an empty game object. Go into the game object menu, select create empty and we get an empty day. 
game object and we rename it to score text and the transform is something not in the origin so we reset it uh, and to to show some text on the screen we need to add a component to it and the component is in rendering so click rendering and on the bottom we have something called GUI text so add a GUI text component and we get something here called score zero we can have the default text that's the text that we're gonna show and in the scene view we don't see any GUI text because the scene view only shows the 3D objects. We need to go into the game view to actually, actually see it. Uh, and we need to move it to something because it's invisible right now. So we're going to change the position to 1 in Y and we see that the score shows up in the upper left corner. And, but it's almost the edges of the screen so we want to move it in a bit so we can use the pixel offset to move it some pixels into the game so that looks fine and to make to calculate some score based on if we pick up some objects we need to increase some score variable every time we pick up an object and the actual collisions with object is done in the player script. So we go into the script object, open the player controller script. And we see that the on trigger enter. This is where we know that we have collided and removed a pickup object. So we make some variable to hold the score. It can be private, private in score. Score shall be zero. From the start so we set it zero in the start the constructor and for every time we collide with an object we increase the score by one so now we have a variable that calculates the score but we also need to update the score gui text field in the screen so we make a public variable with a reference to a gui text object GUI text score text. That's a reference. And every time the score is updated, we need to change the text. So here we reset the text to zero. Score text dot text. When we change the actual text of a GUI text object, equals score plus score. And we copy and do the same thing every time we increase the score down here. That looks fine. Save the script, go back to Unity, click the player object, and we see that we're missing a reference here in the player control script. Score text none requires a GUI text. So we take the score text object here, game object, click and drag, and release it in the field score text and it's automatically updated to a score text GUI text object looks perfect and now we can test the game oh I got one point two points three four five six seven it's not that easy to to move into them. Time do, 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 do. perfect last one. So we can just get twelve points, and we're not ending the game right now. We're gonna learn how to end the game in the next practical project we're gonna do. So the final thing is to deploy the actual game. Um, now we have a game and we can test it in Unity, but we haven't really deployed it yet. Uh, we can build a binary and the binary can be built for a web player or it can be a standalone for PC or Mac or Linux. You can use uh, iOS build or Android build and many more. So to deploy a game, go into the file menu, click build settings. And 
we have a list of scenes in build and we want to add the scene we have so we click add open scenes and we see that level one is shown up here and we select the PC Mac Linux standalone and we can also make some changes here if we would like to but we click the build button and now we get uh, we need to call it something when we build it and we rename it rollerball and we can click let's see it's in the assets as default but we would like it to be in the release folder at the releases of our game so we save it and we have a building player now it builds the actual game it can take some time depending on how much uh, assets you you have right now we don't have any 3d textures and stuff so hopefully it's gonna be pretty fast but still working both processing data and now we it should open something called uh, rollable that's where it is we have a release here we have a game you can double click it and we can select how large it should be or if it should be full screen and set it window and some graphics quality and then click play made with unity personal edition and here we have our actual game finished and compiled and released and we can of course release it to other platforms as well and we can pick it up Ta -da! 12 points and we can just shut it down okay so that was the first of our two practical projects in unity so the next practical is the space shooter where we're going to use some 3d models it's a slightly larger project thanks for listening to this lecture my name is johan hagelbeck and it's a course introduction to game programming 1db437